What would you say if someone said to you, how do you make friends? Asking questions. It's making a coffee date, just sometimes sitting with somebody or making a plan or going on a walk. Or if you're interested in taking a yoga class, go to a yoga studio and start talking to somebody. It's literally opening up a conversation, a dialogue. I also think it can be even simpler. Charlie is here. I actually, oh, hi, Charlie. sometimes it's Halston. That's how they talk to us from the <laughs> oh, control room. I oh was, my God, I feel I like, like an angel. Is that, is that Jaguar we... talking? Like, where did that come <laughs> from? That's Paula. Paula's a panther. Paula's a wow. panther. I, I call really myself know. a panther. I married a younger man, two years younger, but... But someone was like, oh, how's it, what's it like being a cougar? I was really drunk, and I was like, I am not a cougar. I am a panther, and there's a big difference, right? And I went this whole big spiel about the difference between a cougar and a panther. I love that. And then my kids saw this rant, and my kids are teenagers, saw this rant, and they were like, oh, it's a panther. So I don't drink often. So now, now but every once in a while okay. when I drink, uh, they're like, the panther's here. The panther's <laughs> coming out. Here comes a panther. And then, like, you know, people started bringing me panthers. And yeah, stuff. that's so, adorable. So, so it stuck. And Paula is my friend who helped me. I'm really good at, like, the big brushstrokes of design. Like, I picked the wallpaper and the couch, Love and it. I'm done. And after that, I don't do pillows. I don't do rugs. I don't do, I don't do the, I don't do this side hustle stuff. I just do the big picture stuff. And Paula, who's just an amazing interior designer, comes in and like judges everything. So I had to name one Panther Paula. The one with the crown. The homage to Paula. It's Paula. Because this would not be as fabulous were it not for Paula. So. It's great. Yeah. Would you just have a couch and wallpaper? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And that'd be all that I have. No, I love it. So I'm so glad to meet you guys. Thank you for having us. We're so happy to be here. We're really excited. I was, I found your book called Stay Golden Girls, Friendship is a New Marriage. Here it is. Um, at a woman named Jessica's house. She had it sitting on a little table. And I was like, well, what, what is this book? And she told me about you guys. And I was like, would they like to be on my podcast? I would love to talk to you. Not just because the book sounds amazing, but when I got into who you actually were, I was like, okay, yeah. this is exactly who I am with my friends. And what an amazing kind of movement sort of that's happening with women of our age and maybe even younger, maybe older, but definitely our age group is creating communities with women in a different way than I think they did before. Would you say that's true? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And, and you know, we definitely know from experience because you know, that's where it always starts. Any creative endeavor starts, hopefully with something personal. Mm -hmm. So Rachel and I are part of a group, mostly kind of it all coalesced in college. And that's how Rachel and I know each other. And so when we got this idea, one of the things we started to notice is that it wasn't just our group, of course. And the more conversations we had with younger women, for example, we really noticed that younger women are prioritizing their female friendships in a way that we kind of grew into later. Mm -hmm. That, you know, this idea of platonic romance or like, can I swear? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Um, That idea of, you know, fuck that. I'm not waiting for a a maid or a partner. I'm fine. I I can marry my best friend. We're all going to live together. And so we just, the more we had these conversations, the more we realized we kind of was like, oh, this is in the zeitgeist. Right. Yeah, and it's not really also just about living together with your friends, although we we fantasize about it one day. <laughs> a little <laughs> right. tiny home community. Right, that's right. right. exactly. Yeah. And who's going to do what? We've already planned that out. But it's really Thank just- Thank God Rachel cooks. <laughs> yeah, she's really talented because <laughs> gonna that's going to yeah. save our asses. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's about friends wanting to live nearby and form that community or just have that like weekly- time or, or a girl's trip, but just about the importance of our women's friendships and how meaningful they are and how our significant other isn't the only person that we have to orbit around and that we can prioritize our friends. And as we get older, our friends end up being even more important 
And so we just wanted to celebrate that. And we knew it was in the zeitgeist, as Rachel said, when our daughters were talking about Galentine's Day. And we wanted to celebrate Galentine's Day. And this book is a perfect gift for Galentine's Day. Um, And also just we found this amazing article about seven Chinese women, and they were young women, and they pooled their resources together to build a home that they could get together in and maybe one day retire in and how it brought them together. And, and it's like a fantasy. Yeah. They bought a broken down mansion, mm-hmm. pulled the resources and fixed it up. And, you know, what an amazing, we, we do say that is, you know, it's sort of like the golden girls, but for now and for today and for any age. Mm-hmm. That's such a cool idea. I know I've seen a lot of articles of, of people just buying a plot of land and putting tiny homes or small homes yep. and living in a community, creating their own kind of like, I don't want to say retirement community, but I, I don't know, a commune sort yeah. of, a friendship commune maybe. That's right. And I think it's such a, I think I would love that. Because <laughs> as we're different now, I think, than generations before where people didn't leave where they grew up, right? So they stayed in their community. So they had a community, but so many people are so fluid now and go to college in a different state or, and make friends who are also in a different state and end up working somewhere entirely different. So you have to create this urban family. We call our family here, our urban family. Mm -hmm. And our family of origin is obviously what that is. And our urban family is so uh, vital. It's so important to day to day. I love what you said about your life not having to orbit around your spouse. I think that was kind of what happened in the past. And it's not healthy. I don't think it's healthy to only rely on the man or woman that you're partnered with for everything because they will disappoint you because... Oh, Everybody that's in our does. Book. Yeah. Is it? It's in your oh, book. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's exactly right because not only is it maybe not healthy, it's also probably naive mm. and maybe unrealistic. Mm-hmm. I think as we mature, and again, maybe the younger generations of women are going to get this much sooner, but I think as we matured, Rachel and I certainly came to understand that you don't have to rely on your spouse or your partner to fulfill all of your needs and and the joy of going and hanging out with your girlfriends, laughing your asses off to the point that you're kind of peeing in your pants is is something that it's super fun to to experience and you don't feel you don't have to feel bad that your spouse isn't the one making you pee in your pants from laughter. It's okay. Right. It's, you know, and and it's a blessing. But I think the flip of that is, at least for me, because I have girlfriends that I do this with, I come back to my marriage super energized, right? I'm renewed. I'm refreshed. Not that anything was wrong when I, before my girl's trip, but you come back so excited to share that. And, you know, Bert knows all my girlfriends pretty well. I would inarguably say he is a girlfriend most of the time. I mean, one of my closest friends, Sandy, is inarguably his closest friend. So we share her a little bit. (laughs) That's amazing. But um, it's so fun to go back and to feel, uh, for me to feel like I have a life that has very little to do with him, right? You're supposed to share this life together. You share kids. We share a business also. It's a lot of sharing. So to be able to go, no, 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 over here, I'm going on a trip with these three women. Love ya, yeah, not invited. Absolutely. <laughs> it feels pretty yeah, good. You know, we had a male friend read our book and he said, you know, I have to say it not only inspired me to reach out to my friends, but my wife's girlfriends have saved our marriage. Oh, and I wow. thought that was a really oh, yeah. cool thing to hear because we need our friends. They're our therapy. Mm-hmm. And so he it's a different type of therapy, that. right? Yeah, different type of therapy. Because they know about the whole dynamic. The therapist, in theory, unless right. you're in couples therapy, should only know your mm-hmm. side of the story, right? Right. But we, Sandy and I talk about this all the time. We married similar men, although Sandy and Bert are similar people. Mm-hmm. They're high achieving, they travel a lot for work, they are high functioning, really intelligent dudes. 
And sometimes they're a pain in the freaking ass in that same high level way that they're rewarding. So she and I joke all the time because I can say, this fucking asshole. I hate my husband today. And she knows that I, I'm just talking. You know, I'm just saying it. And nothing needs to be fixed. I just need to be listened to. Absolutely. And I have the instinct in therapy to get an answer, to have a solution, to what's my plan? What's the next step? You know, it's kind of a tool as opposed to just, um, I don't know, just someone who's in the same place I'm in and has a different perspective, you know? Completely. She's not a professional. She's just a, a person that is in my world that can relate in a different way than my therapist who I've been talking to about Bert, you know, since we've my whole marriage. There's just so vital to have that different perspective, you know? Yeah, in a way, she's a professional friend. Yes. So she knows you so well. And I think that you, you bring up such a good point. I feel like Rachel and I are an example of a relationship where sometimes she's going to give me advice Sometimes I'm not going to want it. And that's okay to say like, no, I just want you to, I just want you to listen to me. And, and sh when you know each other so well, you can kind of read those moments mm -hmm. and you can also overstep mm -hmm. and be like, you know what? I really think that your husband should shut the fuck up about that finally <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, look, I'm married to a brilliant, um, talented pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Same. He is, and, oh, you know. Same. Oh, <laughs> overachieving. <Hi, Todd. laughs> Working so hard. And, but there are, you know, you want these key things to work in your marriage. And then, you know, I think one of the things I'm most proud of with the book is that we hit on this idea that like, it's a, the marriage can work and function the way that it functions, but the effortlessness sometimes in your female friendships, where it's like it doesn't require the same amount of work. You want to water uh, the flowers in your garden so they continue to grow, but with girls' friendships, it's like so natural and it's really easy, and you just want to do it. Sometimes within a marriage, you're like. I have to do it. It's important. And because men and women or even um, women and women or men or men, the, the structure of a marriage, it just brings out something different. Mm -hmm. And so again, that effortlessness that, that within female friendships, I have grown to appreciate so much. I know instinctively how to be a good friend to Rachel. I know how to be a good friend to my other girlfriends. And, um, it's it's super enriching and really gratifying. It's a different agenda, isn't it, with a friendship? I mean, with a marriage, you have a different agenda. There's there's totally. other layers that aren't in friendships. It just makes it a bit more complicated. I, I completely agree. Now, I know in my friend group, I have different friends for different roles, right? Is that true in Absolutely. your friend group? Absolutely, yeah. Completely. Yeah. And we have different friend groups, too. We yeah. have the main one that kind of originated in college that, you know, Kimmy, who sent us the article from the Post. I got it right this time. Mm -hmm. I didn't say the Times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and then there are, you know, I have one of my best friends from when I was six years old. I'm still best friends with her. And that's a completely different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. Don't you think that's so valuable? Oh. To know who to pick up the phone and call for what you need. You know, I have one friend, I talk about this all the time, Kathy, who's a regular guest here is a contrarian. And that's not a negative person, but she sees the contrary point of view to mine all the time. And sometimes that contrary point of view is exactly what I need to calm down, to manage my expectations, to handle a situation. If I want someone to fire me up, I call Sandy. If I want someone to give me a juxtaposed position, I call Kathy. And so as I've aged, I didn't know this in my 20s, but as I've, I mean, 53, as, as I've aged, I've figured out um, people's roles. You know, if I want somebody to like get shanked in the shower, I'm calling Lynn Grusin. That's who I'm calling. That girl is a lawyer and she will get you. Watch out. So I, I feel like I have that position with my friends, right? 
and I have a role. It's just, which is very different again from your spouse. Absolutely. You know, but I think that's also really smart because if you, if you, if we've learned at this point, don't pigeonhole your spouse or expect your spouse to provide everything for you. We certainly don't want to make that same mistake with our friends. Mm -hmm. Why ask one friend to be everything for you? Every person has different strengths and different things they bring to the table. Like when we talk about all living together, you know, and um, like we have a friend, Denise, who can fix and build anything. So like, all right, she's invited. (laughs) Um, And yeah, so anyway, I, I really do agree with that because why repeat the same sort of like younger, a uh, romanticized notion that one person can fulfill all of your needs. Yeah, I don't think it's really possible. Agreed. It's it's really unrealistic. So how did you, so you just, uh, I think you've already said this, were just reflecting on your own friend group and decided to write this because you found that it was kind of universal somewhat, right? What was the hardest part about writing this book? Um. I don't think it was hard to write the book, honestly. Oh, we good. we enjoyed it so much and it was a really fun process and we just would gather quotes, we would gather thoughts and then we organized it into different chapters. And then when we reached out to Girls Inc., because partial proceeds go to Girls Inc., which is an organization that's been around since the 1800s, it's incredible, and it mentors girls and young women, they were on board. So that was exciting. Um, I think the biggest kind of learning curve for Rachel and I is that because we are indie publishers, we are learning the book world is not a straight line. But what's been really amazing is that we've gotten it into so many incredible boutiques Mm. and we've had um, holiday boutiques, those types of things as well. And the response is what is just really energizing us because whether it's a young person that, you know, as Rachel said, you, wh- why don't you, what's the shop you walked into? With oh, all the girls? yeah. I walked into the shop in Santa Monica on Main Street and these, you know, girls, they were just like so young and hip and chic with their like tattoos and all the jewelry and all the stuff. And they were just like, oh, yeah, this is me and my, you know, this is exactly me and my friends you know, not a, not a fuck guys kind of thing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, these were obviously, these are two straight uh, women, but they were like, we just, it's not necessary in the same way. When we were in our twenties, it was like, okay, a little single focused. Mm -hmm. Let's find the guy um, in our case. And uh, who am I going to marry? Who am I going to have children with? And that was sort of a single vote. These, the 20 year olds, they don't feel that way. Um, you know, straight, gay, they are just absolutely more open minded or well rounded mm. in terms of what they're looking for and how they can be satisfied in their lives. Um, but I would say, what we we had a real we had more fun than any two people should probably have while writing this book <laughs> because we definitely there were moments where like we would write something and we'd be cracking up and then we like run it by somebody and they'd be like that is so cringy like what are you even <laughs> saying I'm like all right it's let's look at that husbands. again you know um but yeah I mean we we started from a place of let's entertain ourselves let's let's pay homage to you know, what's experiencing, you know, what we're experiencing. And I think other people will see what we see. And um, I'm in the entertainment business Mm -hmm. and the book publishing world makes the entertainment business look logical, sane, easy. (laughs) I'm like, holy shit, what is happening here? This is crazy town. So that's been the hard part. Writing was easy. Publishing is hard. Yeah. Uh, And just to kind of continue the tangent that I went off on about the bookstores and and people relating to it. So across the board, it's been really exciting to see the response. And what we love hearing is that someone reads it and then they go out and buy six or seven for their girlfriends. And often these girlfriend gangs have names (laughs) and that's really cute. And they travel together uh, or they all like every year buy a piece of jewelry. And it's just, it's been really- Or the group that bought the jewelry and the diamond necklace and like 
they each take turns. They all invested in the diamond necklace, oh my God. and they each take turns. Yeah, where is a it. book and a movie made yeah, out of it? It's really but anyways, amazing. that's it's, cool. It's been Michael. fun. It's just fun to see the reaction, and in a world right now that feels kind of dark and a lot of sad things happening. It's nice to be able to celebrate something that we all can get on board with. And I am a mental health advocate and loneliness is an epidemic and, and it's a killer and it's a killer. It causes so much health problems. It's, it's so bad for your health, Mm. not just your mental health for your physical health. They're related. And so Rachel and I are calling ourselves friendship ambassadors. We want to encourage not just women, but just friendship and the benefits of friendship. And yeah, we, we're arguing about which book to write next. Yeah. And um, we are, I, I think one for men is really um, necessary. I agree with you because I think for what my experience of the men, either as counterparts to the women in my group or men that I see with my husband, they don't prioritize friendship Nope. You know, back in the day, uh, I grew up in a really small town in Georgia. So, community. What, what's the name of the town? Bowden. Okay. Exactly. I wouldn't that have it's been crazy? Be like, small. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been through there. It's really small. It's like 1,600 people. Oh, wow. So, but men had a lot of community kind of naturally built in, right? Where uh, you go to someone's house on Sunday, you eat dinner, you sit on the porch, you shoot the shit, you go back to work, you work the week, happens after church every Sunday. It doesn't really work like that in LA anyway. Mm-hmm. It might work that way in other places, but here I don't see that. And I, I encourage Bert to reach out and go play golf, you know? You guys uh, put something on the smoker and smoke meat for eight hours in one day, you know, <laughs> really bra it up. Sure. And they, they have a hard, harder time. I'm not sure why, but they seem to have a harder time with, with that than the women in my life do. We have no problem. And what you said about naming your group, I have two groups. One's called Drop Squad because we work Love out it. together. Aww. Amazing. So it's like dropping weight, Drop Cute. Squad. I love that name. And the other one is called Chub Rubbers because Love. we were on a <laughs> trip together <laughs> and we had one of the women in my group is tiny. She's like five one and size zero, like nothing. She had on these cream linen pants and a, a hoodie and a bandana on her head because we were doing a motorcycle tour in Vietnam. Oh my God. Man. And oh, so they cool. they sat her on the back of the motorcycle with her little legs to the side with these very light linen pants <laughs> and took a picture from below and she looks like she weighs 300 pounds. <laughs> so we could not stop laughing at this picture. We have passed that picture because we got an actual photograph that they framed for us and they're handing it out to us at the table for lunch and mine's cute and Sandy's is cute and Shiva's is cute and then Kat shows up and we're like, oh, <laughs> uh, that is bad. Like, that's not even, I'm so sorry. And she kept going, I look like a chub. I'm going to, it's like, a, oh no, I, before the trip started <laughs> because it's so hot in Vietnam, they make these things <laughs> called chub rubs that you adhere oh, to the oh, inside of your thighs yeah, so you <laughs> don't rub together. So we kept joking about, we should have gotten our chub rubs, right? We oh, and this picture God. showed up and we were like, you, you really needed the chub rub here. Oh, so we just God. started calling ourselves the chub rubbers. Did That's, you wear those chub rubbers? No, like, we never un- bought them. Oh. <laughs> she was just found them as she was oh, shopping God, for the trip. That is so we're the chub rubbers. And that at, is very just funny. When I see that text come through and I see yeah. the chat named chub rub, I don't even care what it says. It makes me so happy. I'm so about... We call all the ladies here that work here. We have a very female heavy office. We ca- we call each other the Babs, the badass bitches. Love it. I had so I had team amazing. jackets made <laughs> that are embroidered with badass bitch on the back with everybody's name embroidered on the front. See, this uh, is just this absolutely is, perfect. Exactly. exactly. I love it. Yeah. It, it's amazing yeah. Yeah. what it does to your psyche when you feel a part of a team, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's That's so that cool. need for, we have, mm-hmm. I think, a primal need to be part of a community. To belong. Yeah, well, we're social creatures. I mean, that's how we've survived. Yeah. It's like actually 
we need evolutionary. Yeah, but now we need Chubb Rubbers t shirts. Yeah, uh, Chubb <laughs> Rubbers is pretty good. I need like a little for next Maybe, for next maybe I can print the picture of Kat on the back of the motorcycle <laughs> on a t shirt. Oh, I'm sure and she'll just like pick that. Chubb Rubbers for life. Oh my God. Because it's the best. Great. I mean, literally, that picture that showed up so and we were like, funny. oh, <laughs> this is, oh my. That's <laughs> it was really unfortunate. Bad. It was really bad. <laughs> Really bad. I actually keep my picture from that trip in my carry-on bag. Oh. And every time I go on the plane, I pull it out and look at it and think about that whole trip. So it was such That's a great amazing. trip. Um, I had a question that just went right out of my brain when I was thinking, when we were talking about this. Um, oh, have have you? has there been a time in your life where your friend group has grown apart and then come back together? That's a great question. Um, I I can talk about a personal okay. experience. So within our friend group, I, you know, one of the reasons, I, I didn't realize this until more recently, and you've heard me talk about this. I um, met one of the, the, the way I actually met Rachel and this group uh, of friends at college was through uh, another one at the time, a girl that we, we met at summer camp. And then reunited at call in college and she introduced me. So I'm very fortunate to have the women in my life, uh, from college because of this one friend. And, um, unfortunately we have grown apart. The whole group? No. Just the one friend? Just the one friend who was very much a linchpin. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, basically like a little bit of the center of the group. Okay brought a few of us together from her different walks of life. We've all remained very tight. Mm -hmm. And so I experienced a heartbreak within that fracture. Mm -hmm. But part of it, I realized after the fact, was such a learning lesson. It was a life lesson for me to understand how important it is to care for the relationships. That if you, if there's neglect does not just mean for your partner, your spouse, your romantic partner, whatever it is, for your friendships, again, plant those seeds, water, wa you know, watch them grow, nurture them. Because if you don't, it's hard to grow together. Mm -hmm. And I think that one relationship fell apart mostly because we were sort of like resting on the laurels of being best friends as young people. Mm -hmm. But then- if you don't identify uh, the things that connect you, you wake up one day and you'd be like, ah, oh, crap. We don't have things that connect us anymore. We don't look at the world the same way. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I think I'll go till the day I die wondering if I had been more mindful along the way to touch base and to be like, this feels wrong. Mm -hmm. Your priorities and my priorities don't seem like they match up anymore. Your value system, my value system. Let's keep connected in the ways that we can. Mm -hmm. And I I will always wonder if I could have done better. Mm -hmm. um, but that break, also something fantastic came out of it. I am a, I'm an even better friend mm -hmm. to my friends. Um, I think than I ever was because I don't want that to happen again. Right. That's so wise. And so, uh, well, and you have kids, so mm -hmm. you know the, like how, and you have daughters. Mm -hmm. So daughters, you know, we see their friendships. Sometimes girls can be really harsh and really mean and just, you know, it, it, we have learning curves through our life totally. and that's how we end up knowing who are our real friends. But um, to kind of change, again, the subject a bit, the importance of what Rachel and I really, I think, are not just modeling, but talking about with our kids, Rachel has a son too, and is a the and a daughter, is the importance of nourishing friendships. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be a lazy friend and just expect everyone to to continue to want to hang out with you or invite you to things. And to have a friend, you have to be a friend and you have to be generous and you have to think of others and check in and not just, you know, kind of be self-centered. So these are things that I think as you get older, you also learn, mm -hmm. you know, That's sometimes right. you learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, our sensitivity consultant, Mary Rose Fernandez, and she's in the, um, like the Northern California area. She 
talks about this with students that that young girls can so benefit. This was never talked about when I was growing up. It was kind of like taken for granted. And I think that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You can't take this shit for granted because it'll it will go away. And so of course, in this, you know, we helicopter parent, we do too much for our children, but this is an easy one. Modeling being a good friend, I think that that's never too early to show your children that that has real value and it's an investment. Um, and to prioritize your friendship uh, sometimes in front of your children yes. because because it's just like prioritizing your marriage where where being a parent is not, it's not healthy for that to be your entire focus, right? You To show your child that you can have a career if you choose to, you can be married if you choose to, and you can have these friendships. You can have hobbies that take your time away from just being on top of them all the time because it is not true that they are your whole world. Absolutely. Trust me, I'm almost an empty nester and I'm like, wait, hold on, what? <laughs> I'm all 18 years of investing in you in this way and you're just leaving and I'm over? <laughs> you know, it's if you continue to... To show them, yeah, you're important, but I have other important things also is, is I think, a very valuable thing for children to learn. Oh, yeah. It teaches the child also that I'm a human, that I'm not this you as the mother. human, yes, yes, that I don't wear a cape and that I never make mistakes or I don't have conflict or I'm, I'm always in control because inherently in a healthy marriage or relationship, those things are true. You're not always in control. You're not always the bigger person. You're not always the smartest one in the room. Sure. And for a child, as an adult, you typically, I think, can appear to be a lot. And and when they see you fall and make mistakes with interpersonal relationships. Right. And see you get back up. Yes, exactly. Huge, huge. Also, the benefit of what you're saying is that they are also kind of being told they're not the center of the universe. That our children are the center of our hearts and our souls, and uh, sort of at, in moments, there's nothing else that matters. Mm-hmm. But but the actual day to day, we need to live, and they need to also be told like they're not the center of the whole world either. So this is why dad's going to golf or mom's going to go out of town with her friends. Good luck. Make yourself food. There's the microwave, whatever it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah well, I think those are I'm, good lessons. I'm right there with you. Yeah. I am about to be an empty nester. Mm. And um, crazy. thank God I have my friends. Same. Right? Same. Like, honestly, because those first few months, I think are going to be sad. I'm going to be wanting to have drinks with my friends <laughs> every night. <laughs> no, but, I, but you know, it, it is really important to, and though, like I mentioned this earlier, I have a feeling our relationships are just going to continue to be more and more important. Mm-hmm. We're going to have more, well, I'm going to have more time too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, you are. You're going to be at my right. house much more. Yeah. But I think, isn't that also part of this conversation about men, um, again, it, whatever the dynamic of the relationship is, if if both members of a relation, of a marriage in this case, invest outside in their relationships, I think that's when the empty nesters in find they get into trouble because they don't know themselves as a couple without their children. Agreed. And then they have to get to know each other again. I agree. And so when there's um, a, a stronger foundations with the, their the, their lives as they function day to day prior to the kids leaving, they're in better shape. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, we, we might have to do some more date nights mm-hmm. and whatever the situation is, but I'm also going to continue seeing my friends and, you know, building those outside relationships. And by the way, we have friends who aren't married or are married and don't have kids or are divorced and have kids. This do, this is across the board, right? Mm-hmm. It, Absolutely. It really is. And, uh, and so that's another great thing that yeah. when we talk about friendship, it's really universal. It is universal. Yeah. And yeah, I think modeling it for your kids is the most important thing you can do because, you know, girls are complicated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> girls are complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they can see women mm-hmm. in healthy friendships with women, 
Exactly. It makes it easier to build a healthy friendship mm -hmm. with a woman as you grow up. I did not witness that. My mother never had girlfriends, ever. Right. Yeah, and that generation was No, yeah, it was totally not, different. Nope. And so I didn't have girlfriends until I was in my 30s. And in my 30s, I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> we have a lot in common. <laughs> we are actually kind of the same. Right. You yeah, know? and so, we're just stronger together, you yeah. know? And that's what I I'm hope and continue to see in my girls is that, you know, they're, they're holding each other up. And I want to encourage that because clearly, you know, we can do so much together. I, totally. Yeah. Something that when you were talking about empty nester, this is what I was thinking of, um, just came back to me. Um, it's unfair to your child for you to fall apart in a certain way when they leave. It burdens them with taking care of you in a way that's not fair, right? So I've I've seen friends fall apart so massively and call their kid every day when they're in college and really freak out about their kid being in college. And uh, I, as a college age student, my dad divorced his second wife and fell apart. And it was really, really difficult. I did not have the tools. I did not have... It made me feel responsible. I was responsible for an adult that should have been responsible for himself. And I look at that now, it, even if you're in a happy marriage and everything's happy, you should be your own entity who can care for yourself and not Absolutely. fall apart to that capacity when your kid leaves. Now, my dad fell apart because of something else, not because I left. But the falling apart and the after effects of it, I think can be similar for some parents who don't maintain this entire life that has little to nothing to do with their children, like a career or a volunteer position or, you know, friendships or just a hobby, yeah. you know, playing tennis every day or however much or golf or whatever. And having that focus, I think is to, the kid doesn't, you know, my kid doesn't want to take care of me. No, and that's not the cycle. No, it's they're, not the cycle. Yeah, they're, supposed they're supposed to, to launch. help their own children when their time exactly. comes. Yeah, we're all covered if the cycle works the way it's supposed to work. So I, I you know, it's, you bring up a great point. Hadn't even thought about it. I'm a little bit behind you guys in terms of the ages of my children. And I'm lucky because I'm just going to continue to fall apart until my children leave. <laughs> so I'm totally way ahead of you. <laughs> well, I started thinking a uh, year, maybe a year and a half ago. Okay, what, what do I have set up for when they leave? Like mm -hmm. I need to go, mm -hmm. I'm a planner. So I was like, uh, what can I get in place before? And I actually, um, I'm quite spiritual. Um, I'm not very religious, but I pray a lot. And I actually prayed and said, I, I am open to new friendships. And I ask, please send people my way that can help me fill up when my kids leave. So I have friends that are parents with our kids that are, you know, that were connected that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested in a more dynamic group. And several women showed up. It, they just showed up. I mean, showed up to the point where they were like, I think we have a lot in common and I think we should be friends. Yeah. And I go, let's do it because I asked for it. And that's what I want. So wow. to think that you have multiple friend groups that perhaps you've had for a long time, you can rely on your expertise, on your experience, on your uh, positive feedback from those groups to build new groups at any point in your life. It doesn't have to stop because you met, I'm not implying that you did this, but it doesn't have to stop because you have a, a friend group from college. Nope. Or I have a friend group from elementary school, from my kids' elementary school. I I've added friends from my kids' high school, which is a completely different group. And now as they're moving on, I started looking around in my professional world going, who, who, show me who I want to be in a relationship with. And let's see how that works. It's yeah. really exciting. I totally agree with that. I have some besties in New York because we lived there for about eight years. My husband was doing a show, uh, two shows back to back for HBO. And those women were going to be with them. And we're going to New York for a little book launch. And we're super excited about that. But you know, it's even a different 
geographical, the vibe is different. The energy is different. You do, you rely on different groups for different things. I last weekend uh, was with my junior high besties. So cute. Um, well, you hang on to people. I do hang on to people. <laughs> That's great. But then I will say last week I was at an event and this producer, she, we were leaving. We were at the valet at the same time. And I think I literally was like, I feel like I'm supposed to know you. <laughs> and so uh, we are having coffee on Monday. Amazing. Yeah. So just That's so cute. And a friend, uh, like a- Don't, you're like not going to be jealous. Blind date. No, no okay, I'm not going to be jealous. <laughs> So that's a, that's yeah. something I want to ask you about too, because different people are different. I definitely, um, my friend Sandy, one of the most gregarious people on the planet, right? And as she's the as, one you call if you want someone to be shanked in the shower. No, that's Lynn. Oh, okay. I kind of want to meet Lynn. <laughs> Lynn's can we, fabulous. Can we get that together, please? Lynn is fabulous. <laughs> They're all Lynn. fabulous. We need all to my let move in with us, too. So. Exactly. Lynn is I the guess. best. If you need yeah. someone cut off at the knees, <laughs> yeah. she will do it. No problem. She's the one on, on Instagram. We send the memes of like... Um, the S on your forehead need, means stupid. You know, so we're like that. That She's my friend where we just Amazing. shit on people, not in front of people or directly at people. Just like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So fun. I love our friendship. But um, no, Sandy made a large group of new friends once our kids were best friends in elementary school. And then our families just stayed friends. But our kids started making other friends because they went to different schools. So she, of course gathered this huge group of new friends. And we didn't really find very many new friends in middle school, not for any good reason. It just didn't really materialize. So someone asked me, aren't you jealous of all of her new friends? And I'm like, why would I be jealous for someone to be full of happiness and joy? I don't need to be part. I'm secure in my relationship with her. We are family in our own way. Godspeed. And I would hope the same would be true for her. But I don't know if everyone in our bigger friend group functions like that. Do you notice that in your friend group where some people feel left out if they're not brought along in this new group? And it's not necessarily necessary. It's not natural sometimes. Like I'm now friends with one mom in that group because it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to be like, yeah, I'm coming with you to all these people. I don't know anybody, but you got to bring me along. Right. Do you well, experience that? I talk that? about this with my daughters, how like, and I don't mean to generalize, but I'm speaking from my own personal experience as a woman, is that like, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can be in your 50s and still get your feelings hurt because you've been left out of something. Um, and whereas like my husband, Todd, who's so busy, has a million friends, like, could give two shits and it's like, oh, good. I don't have to go to something. <laughs> I kind of feel that way too. Right? I'm, I'm a no, little I feel tired. that way too also. But, but I think that, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can, we can get our feelings hurt. But, and again, this could be a generalization, but I think if you're happy in your own life, then those types of things don't bother you as much. Or if you're really close to someone, you could say like, hey, fuck you, invite me. Like, right. or whatever it is. So, my point being is, yeah, we can get our feelings hurt still. And and there and we'll go out maybe in a smaller group and say, like, don't tell this person. We don't want that person to get their feelings hurt. So I don't know. Do you have anything to add to I, that? I do. Well, that was actually what I was asking. If yeah, you do yes. that, if you go, let's keep this yeah, quiet and just yeah. the two or three I of think us. Sometimes yeah. you do yeah. need to be with a smaller group. Yeah. It depends on maybe what's going on in your life or what you post on. Yeah. The Instagram. other thing I do notice, and that there, there's absolutely, I don't know if it's a psychological term, but there's some like um, it's there's a, a competitive nature sometimes, like. Who has the most information on everybody? Who do you go to for the source of all the information? Who feels like they kind of want to be the first person to distribute the information? Or when things are not going well for somebody, sometimes I do notice there are women who have a tendency to be competitive with who feels the most pain for the person who's having an issue or who really gets their feelings hurt if they don't know the bad news. Mm. That's what I see more often, mm. to be perfectly frank. Interesting. And then there's someone like me that's like, 
doesn't care that I'm the last person to find everything. <laughs> it just takes all kinds, doesn't yeah. it? And yeah. I think the the important thing, at least in my experience in my group, is to just be compassionate with where everyone is. It yeah. doesn't even need, mean that you have to hugely adjust the way you function, right? It's nice to be mindful and go, oh, you know, this one would like to know first. So I'll just tell her first, does it really matter? That's right. And if it doesn't really matter, then it doesn't really fucking matter. There's no reason to be like, well, I'm not telling her just because she wants. That's stupid. That's, That's right. like high school stuff. So if you're mature in your relationship and can just take a good look at who everybody is, because the person who probably gets their feelings hurt for learning last has a yin to that yang that's amazing. Of course. Right? So then you go, that's the person who's the first one to set up the meal train when there's something tragic going on. Absolutely. So you want that person on your team. I think sometimes in my talking with women uh, about this, they have a hard time not compartmentalizing those things and not saying, well, because she has to be the first to know, I don't want to deal with that. Instead of going, well, me, she may have to be the first to know, but look at all these amazing things she brings to the group as well. Absolutely. So fucking tell her first. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. And again, more generalizing here, but you know, there are some people that really feel like they have to fix things constantly. And, and, and sometimes all a friend really needs is to just listen and have someone there to listen. And so we do. It's funny. We have a group chat and we know the first person that's going to like always disseminate information. We know the person that's going to organize the birthdays. We know the person that's going to... We call her Julie, the cruise director. Yeah. <laughs> Julie yeah. McCoy? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it is funny. You know, we, we, even with writing this book, we had, we were worried that some friends would feel left out that we hadn't included them in the process. And we, promise that there are muses, but we're having so much fun doing this yeah. <laughs> that we kind of feel bad for them that they're not part of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think it's funny. I think in every group, there are alphas. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. I mean, I think any dynamic for uh, either gender, uh, you know, again, big generalizations, um, there, there are those dynamics that are in place and it's partly how the group functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it functions better if everyone just relaxes into that a little bit. Exactly. Lean yeah. into it. Yeah, lean yeah. into it. It's I, all different. Sandy, because she's a foodie, I don't ever plan where we go to mm -hmm. eat. I don't care. There you go. Just point me in the right direction, yep. right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know. Tell me what time to be there. Give me the address. Exactly. Because if I planned it, she'd have notes. She'd have lots of notes. And she'd be <laughs> nice about the notes, but I'm like, I don't need notes. I'm too busy. Just freaking book it and tell Absolutely. me when to show up. You know, I don't yep. need to be in charge of that. And I think the reverse is true for me. There's things that I do where she doesn't driving. That girl just should never drive. <laughs> so if we go anywhere, I'm driving. So, you know, you have your yeah. rules. Exactly. The, a lot of the girls don't like the way I drive because I drive too fast. You drive too fast? I do, yeah. That is not but her so issue. But so We have one, of, one other. We're, we're good While drivers. While you're doing like, you yeah, know, and I do rolling too much while driving. That's and, true. It's bad. And, but so kind of, again, to wrap everything we continue to talk about in with our book, the tagline is friendship is a new marriage. And Rachel and I have this not only like, we have a different form of marriage now that's a business friendship marriage type of thing. And it's been really fun to see. We're like, we don't even know. Are we like work wives? Are we like, what yeah. are we? You know, because <laughs> it's like <laughs> we, we woke up yesterday and the first thing, it's not even forget about good morning. How are you? Have you had coffee? <laughs> it's literally like uh, launching into, you know, what's happening with the book. And then yesterday was her birthday. <laughs> so I literally like, I, she, she answered the phone. I was like, I want to begin by saying happy birthday <laughs> because 45 minutes could go by and be like, oh, by the way, happy birthday. <laughs> And then, but yeah, tell you want to tell her about our, oh, and yeah, I yeah, my yeah. Ring today. oh, okay. Well, so Jessica, yes, she designed these rings for Rachel and I that we gave to each other. They're clotter rings, 
which is like an Irish what it's a, it's French a friendship and ring, ring female and it's in the O of golden and it's within our book but so we've exchanged rings we've <laughs> opened up a bank account together we <laughs> oh my god so you know things that like friendships can do like in totally. modern friendships can do yep. and so you don't have it's to be just married. But, so what do you do with your bank account <laughs> We well, try to put more money into it that we're taking out of it. <laughs> but right now, it's a little challenging. But what's the purpose of it? Are you oh, paying for the business? It's okay, for the business. Gotcha. So, okay, got gotcha. it. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was like a ba- vacation fund. Oh, oh my no, gosh. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's the future. That's the future. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> absolutely. Back in the day, I used to work in a bank in college because I had to pay my way for college and my job was in a bank. There was something called the Christmas Club. So you put money in this savings account and then you had to cash it out at the end of the year for Christmas. And it's how you save money for Christmas. So I wondered if it was something like a Christmas club, but vacation club for friends. That might be fun. But I think what we should do though, so we, you know, now we have this very large, this, this sort yeah, of LA base. In your group? I would say there's 12. Wow, that's that, great. And this, and it, you know, again, I was kind of kissed in. A lot of these women have known each other. Like we were together with Ali. She, you guys have known each other since you were five. Wow. Um, you know, LA can really do that. It, people think LA, oh, the big city or Hollywood, or whatever. It's super provincial. It is. It's, and it really yes. shocks people. Yeah. But in any event, uh, I think, so what we do is, the birthdays all year long. Okay, so we're going to give Jessica, who is this incredible jeweler, yeah. we're all going to, you know, chip in and everyone gets gifts through. But I think we should just convert that into girls trip fund instead. Like, I mean, although everybody loves a new piece of jewelry, fine, fine, fine. But something to consider as far as I'm concerned. Something to consider. You yeah. could toss it all yeah. in one yeah. yeah. In one account and then go have a, a big overnight spa day yeah. or something fat wine tasting or something fabulous. That's a good Absolutely. idea. Uh, yeah, maybe, I might take my own advice there, y'all. At the next meeting. <laughs> Look what we it's just came up with, my y'all. My birthday was yesterday. <laughs> That's amazing. I may do that myself. Yeah. So what's your favorite chapter in this book? Do you have a favorite? Oh, good one. Oh, God. That's it. I don't. I love the Galentine's Day illustration, partly because it was taken from a photo from my daughter and one of her best friends. They had a Galentine's party. And I just love what it symbolizes that like you can get together with your friends and celebrate each other. And it this one. Yeah. 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 Um, Champagne, which Rachel and I like to to drink. enjoy and drink together. <laughs> um, just the idea behind that, that we don't, it, it's what we've been talking about, that we don't have to re- revolve our world around our romantic partner. It can We can celebrate kind of like a platonic romance and just have so much fun. And there's that pressure that is off. And, and whether it's a um, pajama party or a pizza night or a, a afternoon tea, just getting together with your friend and celebrating them. But it's also, you know, there's something very hopeful about it in general. I always think about, I, I think I'm sort of um, very attached to the first chapter because it really kind of encompasses like the inspiration for the mm-hmm. book, you know, the seven women in China or just this idea that Getting together, planning your girls' trip is almost as fun as the damn thing, isn't it? You know, talking about the, you know, making the plans. The the different personalities come out, or like if you're going to go out, the we laugh. We will literally have been talking for forty five minutes and then see each other within the half hour and like continue the conversation. I yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to pick my favorite chapter because honestly I love them all and they're all very I think meaningful there's a chapter about sisters or friends that turn into sisters soul sister wives there's a chapter about how women all over the world get together to meet for whether it's coffee or tea or booze, or booze. and it's it's unbelievable that might be my favorite chapter name yeah my wine glass is half full my copy coffee cup runneth over and just, you know, how all over the world, 
uh, women get together and, you know. And part of that, because you, we, you were mentioning how your husband ha- like just interacts with his friends differently. Women, we, we look at each other. Mm-hmm. We, we really communicate. We talk about things that are deep, whereas men, they'll watch a game together. And again, I'm sorry, I'm generalizing. They're still parallel playing. But, men are so but like my playing. Right. Like to- Todd will come home after hanging out with someone that he hasn't seen in a while and I say like, what the hell's, what are the kids doing? What are the, and he's like, oh, we, I, we didn't even talk about that. I'm like, you were with each other for like Four half the day. What'd what you do? Yeah, what'd you you do? don't talk about I that? I think the difference is we engage and they experience. Right. right? They yeah. experience a ball game together. Right. They experience golf together. They experience fishing together. They bond right. in a different way. They, they experience things yeah. right. together. And we engage in each other. Right. How's your life? How's work? How's your kids? How are you feeling? Right. You know? And and I hope, you know, I, I as I'm saying so many generalizations, it's so not what I want. And I think <laughs> that younger people are maybe getting more aware and more in tune. And so this, this really is meant for everyone, mm-hmm. truly. I think it is. Yeah. I, I, you know, when I got pregnant, I had a realization that everything was about to change. None of my friends, no, not none. Two of my friends had kids. No one else had kids. And so I started this thing called the Ladies Ornament Exchange Luncheon that I did in December. And I did it for 20 years. Wow. Um, I skipped this past Christmas, but I'm go- I've am i said, uh, we have enough ornaments at this point. <laughs> Everybody's got 20 there's a, ornaments. There's not a tree big enough. I'm yeah. kind of done. So I'm shifting it to February. I didn't even think about Valentine's Day. I was like, let's do a candle exchange in February instead. This is a consumable product. So we're not just accumulating ornaments anymore. But there are some women that I only see on that day. Yeah. And not because I don't want to, because they've moved. I've moved. They have kids that are younger. They're big career women fill in the blank for the reason why but it's so nice and every time they show up they say i can't wait for this invitation and i'm so excited to come every year and some of them i look at and go the things we had in common then we no longer have in common and in some ways i enjoy seeing them like you said sort of is that guaranteed touch base but i don't have to line up with you for everything to still want you in my life and to still love you and appreciate you for who you are. You know, I, from rural Georgia, my value system definitely doesn't line up exactly with everyone I grew up with, but I really value and appreciate every time I talk to somebody that I grew up with and including my family. I love my family from rural Georgia. If we sit down and talk about politics, we're not going to enjoy each other very much a lot of the time. So, we just enjoy each other in in this kind of, um, I don't know, an appro- appropriate is the wrong word, but I don't know. It just works for me because yeah. I love all these women that I just could not possibly invest as much time as I would like to in 25 women that are not connected to each other. You know, mm-hmm. like we can't pile up but at a dinner you've table. But created a community. I did. That is a community. And even though you don't, like we all have different kind of levels of closeness within relationships. So maybe a few of those are very close and a few you only see once a year, but guaranteed if there was an emergency or you needed help or you could turn to that community Mm -hmm. and they would lift you. And that's what we need more of Mm -hmm. in this world. We need more people to just say like, I don't, I might not agree with you politically or let's not talk about politics let's let's find common ground in different ways and and how beautiful that you do that i love that and that i really like you and yeah. that i want you around and that uh, we live 45 minutes away from each other you know that's the problem is right. and I, and i don't want to set up an unrealistic expectation that suddenly i'm going to be at your house every friday night I can't do that anymore. We used to be neighbors and now we live 45 minutes away, but let's stay together. And the reverse is true too. Anybody called me from that party and had an emergency, I'd drop everything. I'd be there in a heartbeat. They're my family in a different way. And I, I don't, one of you said this earlier, 
that this idea that that best friend is the friend is just such a myth. It's like the life work balance is, is, is a myth. It doesn't, you can have it for a minute, but it never stays. That's right. You know, someone gets the flu, your car breaks down. It just, it's not really sustainable over time. So that one basket that you put all your eggs in is just such a myth. And it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be my ornament exchange, your Galentine's Day, the right. Chub Rubbers. It can be whatever <laughs> you want. Chub Rub, Chub Rub on down the line, That's right? Amazing. That's whatever so makes good. you happy yeah. should be the goal. You know, one one thing that I get asked a lot via email is when I started my podcast um, almost six years ago. I can't believe it. Um, when I started my podcast, I I I believe I have so many amazing friends. And I think that it's, they should be shared. Like a, just a regular, normal friendship should be accessible to people. Even if they don't have it in their life at the moment, to be able to listen to me talk to my girlfriends on this podcast was one of the big motivators for me to start it because we have such a genuine and easy friendship with all mm-hmm. these women that are very different from each other. And so many people email me and say, how do you make friends? How do you do that? So I know how I do that. How do you do that? Or what would you say if someone said to you, how do you make friends? It's a really important question. And I often look at like, because we're so blessed with friends and and not everyone has that. And so I, and Rachel, please feel, pipe in, but I think it's asking questions. It's making a coffee date. It's It's saying like, you know, just sometimes sitting with somebody or making a plan or going on a walk. Or if you're interested in taking a yoga class, go to a yoga studio and start talking to somebody. It's as simple as that. It's literally opening up a conversation, a dialogue. I also think it can be even simpler. So there are mommy friends are a really great example of this. You make a connection and you know, I, I'm an outgoing person. I'm lucky to have, you know, be, have, uh, I can put people at ease. And so uh, sometimes mommy friends in particular have gravitated and you want to honor that. And sometimes you meet someone, you're like, this is going to be a part of my life. This person's going to grow. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I realized, even though I, I'm a little, I'm, I take on too much. It is definitely kind of a thing. Like I, you said, work-life balance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, it's a myth. However, I do push myself, especially when you meet somebody new who is reaching out to you in whatever way they know how, which should be like, there's clearly interest in wanting to become friends. I do, I realize that something, a gesture so small you know, somebody like, like if they were on an email chain and they were very concerned because the, they were confused of what the school said or the PSAT, or we were on a college counseling Zoom last night and one of the moms started a little threat. She's like, did anyone else feel very alarmed about that seemed so harsh? And this morning, like, I don't really have time to foster that relationship in a way that I, maybe I'd like, you kind of know, but I made a point to reach out and say, just want to make like just a text. Thank God for text. Are you feeling okay today? Your kid's amazing. Do not even worry about that shit. And like that makes people feel so good. And it is it does not require that much work to reach out a hand in any way and make somebody feel good. Even if the relationship does not go the distance. Right. You've made a, a connection. You've made somebody else feel good. And and that makes me feel good. And I, you know, it is, it's a sense of community. It is. I think so. I think two, what I think, I think two things. One is if you're looking to make a new friend, know yourself well enough to know what you're interested in. That's right. A hobby is a great place to make a new friend. Do you like to crochet? Okay. Then is there a local yarn shop that has a crochet or knitting circle? Go there, hang out. Do you like to play tennis? Okay, go do that. Do you like to volunteer at the local library? Okay, that's where you start, in my opinion, is you start with where you're interested 
in where your interests lie already. Absolutely. So then you have a built-in common ground, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, that and to not be afraid to be rejected. Mm-hmm. You know, to not be afraid to have someone who you might think might be a good friend not engage in the way that you would like. Absolutely. And, and to be, oh, and not to be fragile in that. That's and not it. to be precious with that. Yeah, it's worth trying. It's worth trying. And you know what? If the line's disconnected, the line's just disconnected. It's, it's okay. And not everybody needs to like you back. Absolutely. And I think people get afraid to put themselves out there for fear of rejection. You're right. You're re- right. Rejection doesn't feel good. It's no, not totally. like you go bring on the rejection. But yeah. if you go, the rejection shouldn't prevent me yes. from trying. Right. Then if you have that, slight shift in perspective. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you, uh, you know, have uh, something faith-based, if you, you know, your um, church or your synagogue or your community center, you know, that was the way my mom, when I was very, very young, that's how she made her friends. You know, we went to the Jewish community center for nursery school and my best friend who I met when I was five, her mother is still my mother's best friend. Amazing. And that's, you know, so it, it can be very organic. And I also, I love what you said. Start with something that's that really is authentic to you because I think a relationship probably has a better chance of growing if there is authentic connection. Mm-hmm. So fostering that is super smart. And also, I don't know, don't lead people on. You know what I mean? I think that that's fair too. I think, you know, because I've definitely been in that position where I was like, oh my God, I totally connected with this woman. We're going to be best friends. She's me, I'm her. And it's like, okay, four fucking times I never heard back from this person. Right. <laughs> and that, you know what happens? Those lines, good I, point. And this is what I talk about um, as a mental health advocate is that sometimes just listening to someone being there, um, if they don't get back to you, don't take it personally. It's not rejection. People have a lot going on in their life. But on the flip side, where the mental health comes in with friends, if you don't hear back from them, continue to check in on them. Continue to like, don't give up on them. Sometimes they will appreciate that more than you know down the road. Maybe they're having a hard time. And so I just, I always say, don't take things personally. Everyone has their own shit that they're dealing with, whether it's time pressures or health pressures. Mm -hmm. And just sometimes just showing up. And that can literally be a text. Just yeah. ha- checking in on you today. How mm-hmm. are you doing? Yeah. I think we have a quote in our book. Don't don't let your don't let don't leave your friends alone. Keep bothering them. Right. That's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I had someone say this to me one time, uh, and it stuck with me my whole life. I was in my probably twenty or so. He said to me, "A gift is not a gift if something's attached." Mm-hmm. So if you really want to be a friend. And then and you reach out and they don't get back. You, you have to question yourself of what's attached to that give, right? Because really, life is about giving and you receive. But it should, in my opinion, it should be really about what you give, because when you give, you, the the receive comes automatically. But if you have an attachment to like I'm going to call them and they don't call me back then that's not really a give. That's mm-hmm. something a little mm-hmm. stickier, a little stinkier. Mm-hmm. I mean, after a certain number of times, maybe, but, you know, there's a reasonableness to that 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 should be apparent, maybe. Yeah. Uh, just to, a give is just a give. It's, that's all it is. Right. And I think when a relationship or friendship is already established, the give, it's just so easy to give. You it's just effortless. want to give. R- totally doesn't matter newer friendships that are getting started, it's just a little trickier. Yeah, yeah. you just got to figure it out. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Well, tell me where we can find this book. Where can we buy this book? I tried to buy it and I couldn't buy it, so I'm glad you gave me one. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay. we don't like hearing that. Well, I yes. went to Amazon and it was like pre-order only. And I okay. went, okay, well, I'll pre-order it, but it, I don't think mm-hmm. I could get it till after like January yes, 22nd the, So or unfortunately, uh, Amazon is having delays with their hardcover books. So Etsy, the book is on Etsy. The book is in many boutiques um, in, uh, in across the country, actually. And then we should probably give our website because then you can actually go on and uh, yes. Yeah, well, easily. Um, we're hoping Amazon works it out soon, but we should be supplying it pretty 
quickly in the next few weeks um, ourselves through Amazon. Uh, but our website is stayforevergold.com. And it's that is our brand where we are going to curate a golden lifestyle revolved around friendship. We've got big plans. Hold on. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tell yes. me more about this. Okay. I was about to wrap it up, but never mind. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Well, we this little book has big legs. And Rachel and I see a media entity where there's going to be more books and where there's going to be girls' experiences, girls' trips. Um, down the road, we're thinking big picture, friendship communities, um, teas, coffees, um, Valentine's Day gifts. It's so a, uh, we, we've got big plans, but yes, we're we're launching with this book, but yeah. that's why our website is Stay Forever Gold. So the com. brand, yes, the br- which is the name which of the brand, the brand, which is yeah. basically a gold lifestyle founded in friendship, community, and connection. Well, I'm excited for this book. I'm glad. I'm excited to read it now that I have it, and uh, for everything, Stay Forever Gold. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came. Thank you so much Thanks. for the conversation. This was great. Thanks Loved for having it. us. Loved, Loved it. it. Really connected with you. I know, right? Yeah. I know as soon as I read yeah. your bios, I was like, oh, these are my kind of people. Oh, this is you. totally my peeps. Woo-hoo. So Chub rubbers forever. <laughs> Come on, chub rubs, right? <laughs> <laughs>